praise. We're thankful unto the Lord. We bless his holy and righteous name. Hallelujah. Amen. I know you're still full of turkey. You know, I had turkey salad. Amen. Turkey casserole, turkey everything. But this day is holy unto the Lord. This day is the day which the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. The word of the Lord from Psalm 100 says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Then goes on to say, Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are the sheep of his pasture. We are the people, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. Amen. Can we give God some praise and praise today? Uh, hallelujah, hallelujah. bow your heads in the presence of God with me, our Father in heaven. God, we come right now. God, we come with the praise on our lips. We come with joy in our hearts. We come saying thank you. Thank you for your goodness, oh God. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you, God. You've been good to us all week long. Oh God, even all of our lives, you've been good. Oh God, before we were ever born, Lord, you had a plan for our lives. And you brought us to this day. And we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor in the name of Jesus. God, we bless you for allowing us to gather once more and again with the loss of none. Oh, God, this day, as we come into your presence, Lord, we ask that you will look upon us, oh, God, name by name and face by face. Look upon us, oh, God. Look inside of us. God, you see everything. You see the good, the bad, and the ugly. God, search us out today. Search our hearts, oh God. Take out anything and everything that is not of you. Give us, Lord, oh God, righteousness in our soul. Give us, God, clapping in our hands. Give us, God, a dance in our feet as we magnify and glorify you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we lift up all that are sick and afflicted on this day. We pray, God, that you will heal. Manifest your presence, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. We ask, Lord, that you look on the downtrodden. Look on those that are going through, O oh God. You are the strong deliverer, and we stand on your word. We trust your will, O oh God, and we believe in your way. Help us today as we worship God. Manifest your Holy Ghost in this place. O oh God, have recourse among us, God. And we shall ever give you all the praise, all the glory and the honor in his time. In Jesus' name we pray. And we say thank God. Come on, put those hands together and give us a good God of Give him glory. Give him honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I know I feel like having testimony service today, but we're not going to do it. Amen. So just... Uh, uh, just begin to shout in the, in the air. I am, I am blessed. blessed. I am, I am blessed. blessed. And one more time for the Holy Ghost. I am, I am blessed. blessed. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us receive Sister J. on prayer at this time with our praise and our worship. Amen. God bless you.
pray that you uh, have something for the Lord. Amen. I hope that you didn't spend all of God's money on Black Friday. I say to you often, don't eat your seed. Your seed is for sowing. Amen. God uh, asks for the tenth, the tithe, and an offering. And an offering is what your heart has to give to God. Amen. And God will bless you. I'm a living witness. He said, let every man, what he has, he purposed in his heart. So let him give. Amen. How good has God been to you? Amen. Amen. What is the measure of his grace? Uh, yes, Lord. I can tell you that God is good. Amen. Yes, Amen. Over the highways and byways through the storm and the rain last night, but I made. Hallelujah. Now, if you look back over your life, do you have that testimony that you made? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Let those of up and come down. But you made it. There's some heartache and headache. But you made it. And I thank God today that I'm standing in the house of the Lord instead of sitting in jail. Amen. You don't know what it took to get here. Hallelujah. But God has brought me here. God has brought me through. God has brought me over. Anybody testify to that? Thank you, God. That you're still moving. Have your business in the home of God.
uh, living in the clouds. It's time to come down to earth and uh, talk to the Lord. Uh, God wants to hear from you. God wants to hear your voice in his ear. Yes, corporate prayer is good, and needed, and necessary. But God wants to hear from you. Amen. So let us join together and let the Lord hear what's on our hearts, on our minds. Amen. There are some things we need to pray against. But there's one thing that we need to pray for above all. And that is the salvation of the world. Amen. Some folks, uh, believe it or not, uh, are not going to stop doing what they're doing. Amen. So we need to get those innocents saved. We need to get those uh, uh, who the Lord has designated for heaven saved. And your prayers avail much. And so let's pray this week, uh, 7 o'clock each afternoon uh, on the prayer call line. And uh, that will be sent out to you. Amen. And, and before you get to prayer, you used to tell us, uh, you need to warm up before you get there. So that means you need to be praying all day. The Bible says pray without ceasing. Some stuff has manifested this year. Amen. I, I look at some of the senseless killing that's going on without a cause, without reason, without, without even a justified reason. Amen. Attended a funeral yesterday before I left Mississippi. Uh, people are dying right and left. And we want them to have Jesus when they go up out of this world. Amen. Ain't no sense in living in hell and then dying and going to hell. We need the more of God. Amen. So let's come together and pray. Uh, next Sunday we'll be back in business with our regular Sunday services. Uh, next week after that we have several business meetings. And if you look on the screen you'll see the business meetings that are coming up here at Providence. There is a Providence Board meeting on December 4th, next Sunday. Uh, that's the seven who are overseers of this ministry according to the IRS for our 501c3. And then uh, that following Tuesday, we will meet with leaders. And then we'll have a subsequent meeting with the entire congregation. You need to know what's going on here so that you can get involved. Amen. And be a part of this great ministry which the Lord has provided. Amen. At this time, let us receive the man of God with the voice of the gospel. For this day, our very own youth pastor, the elder Reginald Harris. Amen. Who has made the trip through the storm and the rain to be with us today. There is a word from the Lord. I will caution you to listen. I want to go another way, but I'm not. Uh, we talked this morning about, in Sunday school, how that everybody heard the same thing. Some received it and some rejected it. Amen. Let the word of God sink deep down within you. You're going to need this. You're going to need this word today. Particularly this word today. I know it's good because he struggled to pull it together. And any time, uh, for those who speak, any time there's a struggle for the word, it's a necessary word. Not always pleasant, but cast the all did good. Amen. Difficult to swallow, but good in the end. Praise the Lord. Let us receive the elder Reginald Harris. Will you give God a praise as he comes?
Father, I pray this day that everyone listening, whether by, by Facebook or whether by YouTube or here in person, I pray in the name of Jesus that your word would take root in the hearts of those that hear, that their lives may reach up and grab the power of God to live in truth. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, Father, call us to hear, for faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. While you're standing, the word of the Lord, hallelujah, the word of the Lord. Judges chapter number 16, Judges chapter number 16, hallelujah. Chapter number 16, we'll just be reading four verses there. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Judges chapter 16, verses 25 through 28. And the word of the Lord says, And it came to pass when their hearts were merry, that they said, Call for Samson, that he may make us sport. And they called for Samson out of the prison house. And he made them sport, and they set him between the pillows. And Samson said unto the lad that held him by the hand, Suffer me that I may feel the pillars whereupon the house standeth, that I may lean upon them. Now the house was full of men and women, and all of the lords of the Philistines were there. And there were upon the roof about 3,000 men and women <clears throat> that beheld while Samson made sport. And Samson, and I want you to pay, keep paying attention to this last verse. And Samson called unto the Lord and said, O oh Lord God, remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me, I pray thee, only this once. Can you repeat that after me? Only yes. this once, O oh God, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. And we said, Amen. First John chapter number one, verse nine, just one verse there. As a, as a, as a, just a, a something that we need to blend today. <clears throat> that verse says this: If we confess our sins, yes. He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Can we say Amen again? Amen. 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 Will you repeat this subject as you take your seats? To say the God, the God of again. Of again. The God of again. Will you be seated in the house of the Lord? Hallelujah. The God of again. Hallelujah. Great is your mercy toward me. Your loving kindness toward me. Your tender mercies I see. Yes, yes. Day after day. Yes. Forever faithful towards me. Yes, God. You're always providing for me. Great is your mercy. And I 
appreciate who he is in the kingdom of God and all of you, the people of the Lord. I thank God for all of these yes. great men of God. Come on, you thank Amen. God for these men of the Lord. Amen. I, am all, all, I am usually greeted by a flock of men when I come, and, I, and I, I'm always grateful for that because that's what men ought, men ought to be ruling in the house of God. Because that's the Bible. Hallelujah. I know it's about part of the Bible a lot of people don't like, but that's the facts of, of the word of God. That men ought to be ruling in the house of God. And guess what? Women too ought to be ruling in the house of God. Women have their specific places and their distinct places and in the order of God. And I love to see these men of God operating in the house of the Lord. We yes. bless them in the name of the Lord. These wonderful women of God, we're grateful for you. Amen. For all of those who are operating in ministry, evangelist or, or missionary Kelly Johnson and all of those women of God who are present today, thank God for you Amen. as well. I thank God for my mama. Amen. 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 My mother is here and I'm grateful for her. Amen. And we're not going to preach too long because she has some mustard green waiting for me. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We're going to get over that to them. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're glad to be here again in the house of the Lord. I love Providence. I love this ministry. I love uh, who the people are here because you are family. I have uh, Pastor knows. I have a lot of people tugging me. Amen. Amen. To do this and to do that. But I never want to forsake my position and forsake who I am and what I do in this house because that's what I've committed to the Lord and committed to this house. So I thank God for this opportunity. <laughs> Once again, the God, the God of again. Of again. Mm. Amen. As we are exhorted consistently to be worshipers of God, one of the fundamental principles of worship is that the act of worship is cored in our knowledge of who God is, as opposed to simply what God does. Mm -hmm. Therefore, in order to really not have a misunderstanding, y'all remember that message? Mm -hmm. A misunderstanding of worship and praise, one must come to know the characteristics of God. For they that worship him must worship him, not just in spirit, but must worship him in truth. Can we say amen? Amen. amen. The truth of God is important when it comes to worship because God wants us to worship him with an understanding of his personality, of his character, and the Godhead of what makes him who he is. We want to worship him in purity and in holiness. We adamantly worship God as to his awesome character of omnipotent, meaning that he is all powerful. Yeah. We also worship him in regards to his omniscience, meaning he is forever and always knowing. He's a knowing God. He knows all things perfectly well. But we don't hear too much when it comes to the character of God. We don't hear too much about God's characteristic called his immutability. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. God is an immutable God. Mm -hmm. What does immutable mean? Immutable means that God is unchanging. Say unchanging. unchanging. God is unchanging. And even more, this is the part I love about this characteristic, in his immutability, not only he's, uh, is he unchanging, he is unable to change. All right. Uh, I know Pastor just uh, exhorted us about what's going on in the world today, the ups and the downs. And I don't know about your life, but sometimes I feel like I'm doing so well and I'm just so happy. And then just out of nowhere, something just knocks all of that down. Uh, 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 you, you, it seems like everything is going well. It seems like every, all the details of your life seem to be all in the row on the wall, like we call the ducks in the row. But somehow here comes life, pop, and shoot all one of those ducks down. Come on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I, I, I know one of the, what's, but what's good about the Lord is that God is not just unchanging people of God, but
change, but Jesus Christ Never does change. not change. But the big question, I'm talking to somebody. Now the big question of this message is, what do I do with an unchanging, hear me carefully, what do I do with an unchanging God when my life is full of change? All right. I ask that question again. How is it that I, what, how can I relate to a God who is unchanged? Mm -hmm. But I'm here in High Point right now. By the time I get to Columbia this afternoon, something would have changed. All right. How do I relate to a God that can't be changed by circumstances when time and circumstances always change me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, you got to do want to talk about some changes, huh? You know good well you ain't got the strength you had 10, 15 years ago, huh? huh? I used to be able to drive to High Point from Columbia when feeling things. Now when I get home, I'm done. Hallelujah. Uh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hey, I used to be able, matter of fact, I would leave High Point, go somewhere else to another service, and go somewhere else to another service. I, I can't do that no more because when I have something to do, I got to go home and take them now. Glory to God. I become Life brings forth change. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Somebody say, Elder, you don't look 52. Uh, you ought to check me in the morning. Glory to God. Uh, y'all ought to check me in the morning when, when I got the grunt to get out of bed. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I, when I feel a little pop in my knee, y'all ain't saying nothing. Because life brings forth change. Yes, sir. Uh, you remember when you used to go and you go all day, sometimes all night long? Now you know you're ready to go to bed about 8.30 at night. Glory to God. Huh? I used to be, I could hang out. I had a, a, a friend that had a party, a, a, a birthday celebration last night. And I got there, I got there about 30 minutes. I was like, all right. Y'all know what people say, all right. That means kind of, all right. Because <laughs> I, I was 30 minutes in, something that I was done. I was ready to go. It's about my bedtime. Not to mention, there's no wrestling on. Come on, I need to go. Hallelujah. But my point is, so how do I deal with a God and relate to a God who does not change, but my life is full of change? Mm. Uh, the cycle of life, as it is called, as you stand in the face of an unchanging God, things you thought were constant, things you thought were concrete and were substantial, suddenly have brought about a dreaded change. So my message today is based upon this battle of God's immutable characteristic that seemingly opposes the clear changes in my life. Lord, what can I do? Hear the word of the Lord today, people of God. Hear the word of the Lord is that you don't need the change of God. You need the God of change. All right. Say that again. You don't need a change of God. You don't need God to do any changes to himself. You don't need God to make any uh, 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 clip down of who he is or, or dilute himself as God. You don't need God to change in regard to his character, his omnipotence, his omniscience, and everything that makes him God. What you need is not the God, the, the change of God. You need the God All right. of change. I love God. One of the names of Jesus in the Bible, he's called the Rock of Ages. What does that mean? That means he's stable no matter the time in your life. He's the same God that was there in your birthing room as he will be at your funeral service. He's the same God that was in the 70s when you had those bell bottoms and high heel shoes and didn't know what you were doing, but party. Mama, 
responsibility. I knew you. I love Jesus is so very clear about the power of God and what he knows about us and how specific he is about us. Because the Bible says the number, the hair on your head, including mine, the, the hairs on your head are numbered. Uh, see, uh, what you don't understand <clears throat> about that, that, that sentence is that when it says that he the hairs on your head are numbered, what that means, my friend, is not that he just simply knows that you, uh, the amount of hair you have. It is not saying that I know that you have 1.8 million hairs on your No, 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 no. What he's saying is when that, when that one hair came out in your brush this morning, mm -hmm. y'all ain't like to be yourself. Huh? When that hair came out in your comb this morning, guess what? He knew what number of hair that was. Yeah. Yes, now, how much hair have you had in your life? Huh? But he knew, he knew what number of hair that was that came out in your brush. That's how much God knows us. God knows us when we were busy fulfilling our own wants. God was busy fulfilling our needs. Yes. The same God, the same power, the same glory that brought me through all of the past changes in my life. I need God now. Uh, I don't need him to do a change. I just need him to do it again. Yes, sir. Yes. He 
made a choice. Because, catch this, Samson, by Old Testament standards, I need to talk to you, by Old Testament standards, you could not be more saved than Samson. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Samson was, if he, that he had a lot of credentials as did Jesus Christ. Because an angel pronounces his birth. Just like Jesus. Samson was not only announced by the angel, but Samson now is also by birth dedicated and consecrated as what the Bible calls a Nazarite. Mm -hmm. They did not cut their hair. They did not drink. Um, they did not participate in strong drink. They uh, did not eat any unclean meat. And of course, one of the things that they were always talking about is that they had to remain faithful to Israel. Right. In other words, don't go marry anybody outside of Israel. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So Samson being dedicated to God <clears throat> from his birth, foretold by the angel, his life was both physically and spiritually sanctified. He was sworn to not participate in strong drink. He was dedicated to not, eat, uh, to not eat unclean meat. But as long before there was a Clark Kent, uh -huh, uh -huh. there was Samson. Yes, all right. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. yes, sir. Uh -huh. yeah. Because Clark Kent came from all the comics. Come on. Right. Yeah. Samson came from God. Amen. Yeah. Huh? So long before there was a Clark Kent and Superman, there was a Samson. Samson had superhuman physical strength. Wait a minute. He had superhuman physical strength, but hypohuman spiritual weakness. All right. Don't you know that it's very possible to be saved but still miss God? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I didn't get much amen on that. I'll say it again. Yes, Just because you didn't say amen, I'm going to say it again. You can be saved.
And when you know your strength comes from the Lord, I don't have to keep any secrets. Huh? Hey, you ain't gotta manipulate me to get no answers out of me. Because I'll let you know from Jump Street, I can't do nothing without God. Amen. Everything you see me have, every piece of corn you see me wear, every car you see me drive, every house you see me live in, every piece of bread you see put in my mouth, it's because of the Lord. Yeah. Lord gives me the energy to do what I do. God gives me the strength and the knowledge to do what I do. God gives me the focus to do and keep doing what I do. God gives me the word to keep teaching and preaching and doing the things that must be done. Why? Because he's got to get the glory out of my life. Yes. Amen. I'm telling you, where you put your faith is what the, what the devil will attack. Samson's faith was in his hat. That's why he now, when the hair is gone, your strength is gone because your faith was been in the hair. That's right. Mm -hmm. You get discouraged. When you lose the job, you get discouraged and fall out and go, go, don't come to church. Why? Because your faith was in the job. Right. Come on, where is it? When job was simply the venue through which God supplies your needs. And that's what, if he used that thing to supply your need, he'll use the number. Yes, he will. Yeah. You are right. Don't get me wrong. It's not fun losing a job. Wow. I know. Glory to God. It's not fun losing a job. That's simply not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is you better put your trust in the Lord because between jobs, God will supply your need. Yes, he will. Yes, yes. Right. You ain't got a job, but somehow your bills are still being paid. Yes. You still yes. have food to eat in a place to why? Because my hope is built in Jesus Christ alone. So it's dangerous to rely on the strength of God, but miss the God of strength. Yes. Yes. We get caught up in, in our weaknesses and not because of the weaknesses of itself, but because we become self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. We become think, we think we will forget all times that it is the Lord that's keeping us moving and keeping us going. And we become self-sufficient. We think we're doing it ourselves. But Jesus declared to the disciples, without me, you can do nothing. Your eyes blinking right now because of God. That's it. All right. You just swallowed right there. Guess what? That's God. That's God. Amen. You woke up this morning, I can put a, I, somebody said, no, my alarm clock woke me. I can put the alarm clock in the funeral home and see what happens. Oh, they say it up there. Yeah. So I know, it's not the, uh, the alarm that wakes you up, it's God that wakes you up. Yeah. Huh? You, got, uh, you, you got to make sure that you depend on the God of strength, not the strength of God. My second point is this. With this again moment, and somebody said, well, Rick, Rick, you said this is the God, uh, uh, the God of again. Follow me. Let's follow me. With this again moment, flesh must die. Mm -hmm. Again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, help us today. Yeah. When Samson finally had his again moment with God, uh -huh. one would probably say that it's too late because now, all hell has broken loose. They have plucked his eyes out of, of, of his sockets. Right. Mm -hmm. right. He's been made a mockery. The Bible, the scriptures I just read said that he they called him out to play sports. Mm -hmm. He was their entertainer. Right. Right. That's all right. He, I mean, he was useless. He was entertaining. He had no strength, remember. Uh -huh. But that was going through his faith in his hair. He, he, he now has no strength. His eyes are gone, but I mean, he can't, he can't see. He's literally in his final moment on earth. One, in fact, would believe that this is an utter disaster and an utter disgrace. Mm -hmm. that, he will, that, that his fall into sin has not only caused Israel to not be delivered, mm -hmm. but for his, but, but his, internal, his eternal purpose from his birth to right now. Mm -hmm. But I found something very interesting. Catch this. That in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 32, Samson is in what we call the Hall of Faith. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Because mm -hmm. all the other people, when you read the Hall of Faith, Abraham and Noah and right. Abel and all these people, they just did wonderful things. And but in verse 32, I found that Samson's name is there, which made no sense to me because not, not, Samson, Samson didn't operate by 
by faith until right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because says it in verse 32, he's known it to be the men that operated by faith. But how, how is that the case? When he walked in opposition of his calling, lived a life of sin, and died in disgrace, so how in the world can he be considered to be a man of faith? Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you why. Because a mattering moment in faith can override a lifetime of doubt. All right. Uh, yes, sir. You don't, y'all don't believe that. I'm gonna tell you how, how I know how, how I know this right. Because on Calvary, Jesus looked to his right to the man, to the thief, and he said, "Guess what? This, this day." Mm -hmm. Now he doesn't live the life of robbing people. Mm -hmm. That's why he died. He doesn't live the life of robbing people. If you read, if you study, he a uh, thief uh, usually robbing people that they considered was considered to be murder. Because in other words, you had to kill them in order to get it. Uh, they, they didn't go online and hack nobody's account. Uh, they had to kill them to get the money. So usually, there was murder involved. But God said, Jesus said to this man on the side, who had lived an entire life of hell and murder and, and robbery. But because of that one moment of faith, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. hallelujah, Jesus said, this day, you will be with me in paradise. Yes. One moment of faith. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. One act of faith. I know. You see, that's why some of us can be so judgmental when it comes to people's lives. But as long as there's life in your body, it's never too late for God. Amen. Amen. Don't get me wrong. That's not to ignore the consequences of what matters. Because mind you, Samson still had to die. Right. But it was three words there that I know in verse 28. He said this. Only this once. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> One more time. I know I've been a mess. Right. Right. I know. I had a call on my life and I ignored it and rather would have the, the pleasure of this crazy woman named Delilah. Uh -huh. I know I was anointed from my mother's womb to be dedicated and consecrated to God. I know all of that and I've totally messed it up. My, my power to, get the, to, to, to deliver Israel from, from the Philistines has been totally ruined at this point. But this one time, one time Lord. can I, this one more time, yes. I know I gotta die after this, but this one more time, I want to, can you just, guess this, be God again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want you to be God again. Now, now guess this, this is my third point, I'm moving forward quickly. Because what, what he's saying here is, I want you to be God again. But, but there's a difference between again and repeat. Mm -hmm. Y'all hear that to say? Uh, there's a difference between again and repeat. Because a repeat, you, you think those are the same, that, 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 that they're the same. I find that God doesn't do repeats, but God simply, uh, God doesn't do repeats because repeating is just doing the same thing over and over. Right. God doesn't do repeats. God is a God of again, because when he does something again, he now does it to where you now have a fresh understanding of who he is. Amen. That's why you often, that's why you hear me in my prayer time, I'll say, Lord, save me again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Huh? Lord, fill me again. Yes. Do it for me again. Now, I don't need to be saved again. I uh, should say, a repeat of my salvation because I am saved. Yeah. Right. But what I want the Lord to do is to do a freshness in my life. Yeah. Yes. Huh? Uh, they tell me, pastor would be able to answer this, but they tell me and it comes to computers, when something is wrong with your computer, they tell me it's usually over 50% of the things that need to be fixed in your computer would be fixed if you just turn it off and turn, and turn it back on. <laughs> you call it IT for all that. Uh, I told, I told my daughter, I said, why don't you just get into IT because all they're going to tell you is to turn it off and turn it back on. And they, they pay them thousands of dollars a year to do that. Right. <laughs> uh, but what God says today 
is, I'm the God that is up again. I want to do something in your life again that's going to bring a refresher of who I am. A refresher of who I am. Because he, Samson says this one last time, God, because uh, it wasn't a need, it wasn't a need for God to do a repeat. Because if he was done a repeat, it, it, he was about to die, his eyes were gone. Right. But what God needed to do is be God again. So that God can now reveal himself in a very fresh way, in a fresh power, in a fresh anointing, in a fresh glory. Because when you find that God, when, when, when God uh, rehearses himself, thank you, Jesus, rehearses himself in your life, you will find that God now says, guess what? You pray. We, this year has been, how many people say 2022 was a challenging year? Challenging. It was a challenging year for on all types of areas. Everybody I talked to dealing with something. Something going on in their life. But every once in a while, you ought to say, God, I need the God again. The God of again to do something fresh in my life. To be a revelational God that says, God, whatever you're doing, and what, excuse me, whatever you did, I'm not asking you to do a repeat of that. I just need more of you. Yes. Because you know what happens? Sometimes, if you're not careful, the enemy will have you going through stuff, going through stuff, going through stuff, and you never, all you see is that you went through and missed the revelation of who God is. Exactly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Huh? If all I can say, I went through in 2022. That's all right. Huh? I went through in 2022. Huh? Uh, uh, I, if, if all I can say I went through and I, and I missed God, that's all I did was to go through. Mm -hmm. yeah. But when I go through it, I ought to be able to see a freshness of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A newness of God. Yeah. A glory of God that goes beyond yeah. just an experience. That's why, you know what the Lord said to me this week when I was in my time of worship? The Lord said this to me. Harris, make sure your worship comes out of a place more than your hurt. Right, right. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Of course. Y'all, y'all ain't like me. I talk back to God sometimes. And I, if God said that to me, when I, when I heard the Lord say that to me, I kind of looked and said, what do you mean? I'm, 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 I'm hurting. I'm not feeling good. Mm -hmm. well, well, and, and, and so people say, when, you, when you're not hurting, because you know, we always see, when, as you're going through, keep worshiping. And that's true. You ought to keep worshiping. Yeah. But there's a worship of God that needs to come from a place other than your hurt. Yes. Because it's almost like, hear me somebody, it's almost like you don't want anybody coming to you uh, unless they need something. Mm -hmm. In other words, if somebody always comes to you and you know when they knock on your door, they want something. Mm -hmm. You know when, they get, when you get the text, you know they started off really cute. Mm -hmm. How you doing? Oh, <laughs> Type of move. <laughs> ain't in the hollering type of move. 
But I want to talk to you today because what I need you to see as the people of God is that God, don't allow your walk with the Lord to become so subtle and so relaxed to where you miss the experience of God. Mm -hmm. That you miss the experience of God. Yeah, I went to what? Well, how should we? I went to church Sunday, and you know what? How we do? We say I went to church Sunday, just like you said. I went to Walmart on Saturday. Mm -hmm. It's just a part of our week, a part of our. Day. In other words, you just get into the habit of church, the habit of your Christian walk, and there's never really an encounter with God. That's right. Pastor, I don't think it was this year, I think it was last year, taught a session on experiencing God. Notice it's not experiencing church. Millions did that today. Yes. Millions went to church today, whether it be online or, or, or physically. Millions went to church today, but my question is, did you experience God yes. again? And you will become so stagnant in your walk with the Lord. And, we're, and, and can I talk from experience now? And I'm telling you this. If you're not careful, you will allow your longevity to be your testimony. Mm -hmm. I've been running for Jesus a long time. <laughs> and then we add in there, and I ain't got tired yet. Mm -hmm. And you may not be tired. But based on your experience with God, you've been running from Jesus. A long time. <laughs> Not for him. You've been running from him a long time. Because there's still not an encounter, a connection, an experience with the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus came, hear me, Jesus came to restore the fatherhood of God. Yes. Israel didn't know him as father. They knew him as the God. But they didn't know him. But when Jesus came, he came to restore the fatherhood. Why did he need to restore God's fatherhood? Because he wanted relationship with us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He wanted intimacy with us. He wanted a connection with us. He wanted to know you. He wanted you to understand that, look, you are not just a human being passing through and then you die and go to heaven. No, I put purpose in your life. Yes, yes, yes. I birthed you out. Him so he can pray. Right. 
or a bad, bad experience with somebody else in our life, a prayer partner or whatever you want to call it. We have those kinds of experiences. I'm not against any of that. But what I'm saying to you is God says, hey, you have access to me yourself. The bell has been rent. Uh -huh. Why is this? I love my priest Newsom. Mm -hmm. But why, I don't need a priest anymore. Right. Right. I have access to the God. But all I want to do today is ask God to be God again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know what I, I know what I experienced before. I know the, the power that I experienced before. But God, can you do God? You know what I said? Do God again. No, no, no. I ain't got to run. I ain't got to fall out. I'm saying for you to show yourself as God again in my life. Father, in Jesus' name. Father, I know this word was so to do some of the antics that I usually do. But I'm here to let you know, God, that I come personally to seek the againness of you. Church won't do it this time. Title won't do it this time. People won't do it this time. But I say, like Samson, one more time. I need you to be God again in my life. We need God to be God again in our lives, oh Lord. Show us a revelation of who you are. We have church down, God. Father, we know how to do church. But can you show me you? Give me you. When everything else fails, I want you, Lord, again, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Will you just open your mouth and begin to worship him? Just tell him something. Come on, talk to him, Lord. Come on, Father, we bless you. We bless you. We bless you. Come on. I know you're stopping, but I need to hear your mouth. Come on. Fill your mouth with worship. Come on, hallelujah. God, give us to you. Give me you. Give me you. Give me you again. Give me you. Give me you. Give me you, Lord. Not a title, not, not an offering. Give me you. You. Just you. Just you. Just you. Just you. Just you. Give me you. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but if I have you, I know I can withstand tomorrow. Give me you. Give me you. Give me you. Because if I have you, my needs are already met. Give me you. Give me you. My mind is regulated already. I have peace in my mind. But guess what? I don't think, I don't all, I don't go after peace. I go after the God of peace. Give me you. Give me you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's receive our pastor as we come.